Right, we are sorted, we are on. I'll just wait for a few people to pop in. I'm sure everyone's over at the uh, eBay video that I did. I'm a little bit out of frame here, aren't I? But I suppose I'll have to just kind of go back like this, right against the wall or something. I don't know, maybe I need to um, put my camera uh, maybe a little bit for, you know, wider. I can probably put it at wider, uh, a wider sort of angle, but yeah. So I'll wait for a few people to come in. I've got a new little... Uh, banner down here which is pretty cool i think i've shortened it down a little bit as well it, it used to be a bit big so i've shortened it down so i've got my website got my instagram got me like and subscribe i don't think there's anything else i need so yeah you can check out my website down below it's coming up here now check out my website yeah because i did some work on my website at weekend i'll talk to you about that in a minute um and i've also i need to talk to you about some courses and stuff so i will um uh, checking the chat here, so we've got Gemma Lou, we've got Andy Robinson, we've got Money Mental UK, which is Andrew, uh, stuck on a train, so I'll be ne mega late for this one, that's no problem Andrew, and then we've got Kim in there as well. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned a minute ago, I have just published a, like a special announcement, and it's one of the, uh, I don't, let me just uh, check here again, I know it's a bit of messing about, but I just want to make sure, is that properly on? Yeah, you can see that, can't you there? Right, so... That's okay. It just seems like getting the framing right um, with this whiteboard, it can sometimes be a bit tricky because it's either my head's cut off or part of the white web whiteboard's cut off and stuff. Ah, where's my little... Uh, here it is. Got my little um, thingy again. I like this. Um, so, I'll have, to, I'll have to remind myself to keep moving back so you can see me properly. So, uh, goals for this video. 40 likes. I need to talk about comedy shorts. Uh, what do you want? As in, what questions do you want to ask me? I'll cover that. Uh, Insta daily stories. I'm doing daily Instagram stories now. So if you aren't following me on Instagram, I've got my little Instagram handle up there. I drew my little Instagram picture as well. Uh, at adsrobo96. So if you aren't following my, me on Instagram, make sure you go over there for daily stories. Not just business related or eBay related, but mainly eBay related. Um, but also just sharing my day and stuff like that. So yeah, daily Insta stories. I wanted to talk about that. Um, I also wanted to give my mum a shout out because it's her birthday today. Um, so yeah, happy birthday to my mum. Um, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about anxiety and relaxation, uh, which lend, uh, sort of lends itself nicely to talking about what I've been doing this week and stuff within my business. Um, and also special announcement video. Don't forget to check out the special announcement video that I've just published on my channel about an hour ago um, because that is quite interesting. So after this video, if you haven't already seen it, please do over there. I'd really appreciate it. Check out that video. And uh, yeah, you might um, be interested in what I have to say on that video. So I'm just gonna wipe off a few of these different things here. So we did the uh, we did this one, so that's good. So we're getting through these pretty quick today. Although some of them are only very little goals, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I've done that one. So if you want to say happy birthday to my mum, you can shout it out in the chat and I'll tell her later on. Um, so we've done that one, and then we've done that one. So that's cool. So that's good. I don't need the... Um, I don't need the cleaner as much as I first thought, you know. Um, very rude stuff. What are you on about very rude stuff? Who said what, what's happened in the chat here? Um, still on train, da, da, da. Has he started saying he's an eBay megastar yet? No, I'm not an eBay megastar. I'm guessing you watched the video. It's not an eBay megastar. I'm humble. I am humble. Right? I am not a megastar of eBay. I just did a little video with eBay, with the eBay UK. They were very nice. Um, I just literally gave my thoughts and opinions, and uh, and that was that really, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm not an e no, I'm not an eBay megastar. You know what? I, I, it would have been cool to get like a little eBay badge, like eBay certified or something. But I didn't even ask to get a little eBay certified badge. But that would have been pretty cool. I should have asked for a little, like, but I don't think we would have given it me anyway. Um, but yeah, I suppose you have to work at eBay to have one of those, like you know, like a little eBay certified or something. Because uh, cause I suppose it's like an eBay certified staff member, um, and I'm not a staff member, but yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, what did you get your mum uh, some tat off eBay? No, I got her some uh, like of these soap things. I was get I got loads of these soap things. 
uh, well, I won't say what I was going to say because that makes it sound bad, but um, yeah, basically I got a load of these soaps. Uh, let's just say in January, and then maybe people will get where I'm going with that. Um, but yeah, I got a load of these soaps um, in bulk in January, so you get where I'm going with it. Um, and I thought, oh, well, they'll do for loads of different people across the year. You know, my grandpa, my grandmas, because they like the soaps and stuff. Um, and I thought, oh, there's a few other people I'll get them for. Um, and so I just got loads of them in January. And I thought, right, brilliant, I'll stack up my cupboard. There's everyone, there's all the, all the women of my life, there's, they go, soaps, soaps, brilliant, you know, um, so yeah, I got her some soaps, um, and that was about it, I'm pretty terrible, if I'm, like, being, like, openly honest, I'm pretty terrible at getting my parents gifts, like, um, I don't know what it is, but I just, or I either forget, or I, uh, even if I don't forget, I just, like, don't get round to it, it's really, really terrible. I am, like, the worst gift giver for immediate family. Like, for, for close friends and stuff, I'm pretty good. But for, um, or even people like I would uh, class as acquaintances and stuff, I'm pretty good. But um, for my parents and stuff, and my grandparents I'm okay with, but it's, like, immediate family, I'm terrible with. Like, if I ever have kids or something, or get a spouse or whatever, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be terrible. You know? Well, I say that, I mean, I'll probably be a bit better with it, but I don't know. Um, anyway, we'll have a look in the chat. Uh, I don't want to get too uh, bogged down in loads of rambling. I do want to try and keep up with the chat. Um, has this that I don't, I've already said, I, I've already uh, read that one even. Won't uh, won't be joining in as in the middle of a marathon. Marathon? Oh my god. Oh, 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 right. RE photography session. Right, okay. I thought you were in the middle of an actual marathon then, Peter. I thought, bloody hell, you've not said you had been training or anything. So you're in a big photography marathon. Wow, that's cool. Um, have a good one. Happy birthday, Ads, Mom. Oh, thank you very much. She'll appreciate that. Um, Ads, did you negotiate an upgrade to eBay Concierge as a part of the guru interview deal no right okay let's get this clear now i mentioned on the phone to hannah that i do not do uh sponsorship so before any of that was even discussed i basically said my place about sponsorship and i mentioned to her that i would only ever get sponsored by a couple of brands um obviously that i told you guys about the other week about quorn or innocent so quorn or innocent if you're watching you want to sponsor me, you know, I don't know, what would it be? Uh, for my kind of audience, probably only a couple of hundred quid a month or something, and then I do a little thing on each video or something, you know, like a little intro segment saying, oh yes, and this video is sponsored by Quorn, the, the healthy protein or whatever it's called, you know? So, But um, no, so I mentioned that, so I did, there was no payment, uh, nothing like that, I just simply did it, you know, out, because I mean, if you if if eBay contact you and they say we want you to do like a little interview thing on our channel and you've been a seller on eBay for so long and you've been doing it, of course you're just gonna like say yes straight away because it's such a an incredible opportunity. So I wasn't you know there was none of that going on. I'm sure Hannah won't mind me mentioning that either because it's not necessarily you know a big secret or anything. Obviously, if there was payment, then I wouldn't disclose it. I would simply not say anything about it but if uh, uh but because there isn't payment you know i'm just gonna say that so yeah um didn't get any any benefits or anything like that i simply just did it because i like doing it um so yeah you know it, and it was a great experience i was really 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 happy to do it um uh do, do, do. happy birthday ads mom always remember if uh as it's mine oh is it yours as well nigel wow that's cool yeah 7th of march yeah uh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, was you going to say soap on a rope? Ads. Was you going to say soap on a rope? No, not not on a rope. Oh, uh, Lil and Alpha in there. Hi there. We've got Becca in there. Oh, I uh, saw a couple of Becca's videos actually uh, a few weeks. Like it just popped up on my feed actually on on YouTube. So yeah, I saw a couple of your videos, Becca. Uh, it's nice to see like so many resellers popping up. Like you know, all the time is. There's new ones. I've, I've found another one. Is it KLC reselling? Uh, Louise, I think her name is. Found another one. Uh, oh, what's that? Three or four days ago now. So I mean, there's loads of people popping up. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Like in the UK reselling scene at the moment, there's just there's just so many um, 
you know, just so many people just popping up and doing videos. And, and I always wondered, because I, I kept thinking like, you know, there's not as many resellers popping up as I would expect. But now, like the last six months, there's been a lot more resellers popping up. Um, Hi everyone, just watched that vid on eBay's channel ads. That was very good, nice one, mate. Thank you very much. Um, hope uh, ads bought you, bought you a nice cake. No, I didn't buy a cake, no, unfortunately. Oh God, it's terrible, isn't it? Um, uh, did you do, I don't think there's anything else in the chat, so that's cool. So, um, yeah, so uh, what do you want? Is there any questions you want answering before I get on with any other topics? Um, also, oh, I don't know why I'm doing that because I've got my little thing. I just can't be picking it up can I um so yeah 40 likes on the video so that'd be really cool so you know if, if you did watch that uh, ebay video and you enjoyed it smash the like down below show me some love um so yeah 40 likes would be cool not by the end of the stream of course but by the time next week's episode rolls around um so yeah 40 likes would be cool comedy shorts i wanted to discuss comedy shorts so it would not got any um oh there we go there's klc reason yeah i really feel like i should have Louise in my name somewhere. Thanks for the full mention. I had no no worries. If you're not subscribed to Louise, go on the three dots near a name and you'll be able to subscribe. Um, so yeah, comedy shorts. Now I'm aware that there's a lot more you know new uh, people to my channel. Like the last few months, like my subscriber growth has been really really good. The last few months, it's been up where it was like a year ago. So probably like the last well since the start of um, what since the start of this year, I've gone up by two or three hundred subscribers or something so it's been pretty good um about probably about a thousand so a thousand a hundred subscribers a month um so yeah it's been really really good and uh, i'm aware that not everyone will be uh, will know about my comedy shorts so basically but well, as i said up here uh, the comedy shorts were basically uh, you know a lot of people in the chat right now know them but they're basically comedy videos about reselling but for a little bit more than that like like a bit eccentric and stuff a little bit um it, interesting eccentric crazy different whatever you, you know all those kind of words apply to them so if you haven't checked out the comedy shorts do go back and check them out because the reason i bought i wanted to bring this up was because last night i know you shouldn't really go back and watch your videos in pride or anything because that's just very egotistical but I just couldn't, I couldn't help it. I looked at what I thought, oh, you know what, I've got, I've got to watch a couple of my songs again. Because, believe it or not, I'm my own biggest fan. You know, I, I go back and I watch the songs like, bloody hell, they were so good, you know. And the, the songs have, well, I say they've aged well, but they've only been on my channel four or five months. Um, but the comedy shorts, now the comedy shorts have aged really, really well, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, they're, oh my God, they're so, they're so funny now. So if you haven't gone, gone back and checked out Comedy Shorts, go back and do so. There is a playlist on my channel. You will probably get a laugh out of them if you've got a kind of a, a loose sense of humour. You know, if you're a bit uptight and you don't really like a bit of fun and stuff, then you won't like them. But if you've got a bit of a loose sense of humour, you'll really like them. And I would encourage a few of the guys who've been watching me for a while to go back and watch them because... My God, I was laughing like crazy last night. So yeah, that's those. I'm also planning, I, I did say last year that I was gonna do uh, some comedy shorts and he'd wrote the scripts for me and everything. I've still got those scripts written. I've actually just contacted one of my friends and he is free um, either this weekend or maybe another weekend, but he is actually free. So we are gonna be recording another one very soon. I've had so much to do recently. Uh, the last few months that I, I honestly, uh, well, maybe not the last few months, but certainly like the last month um, with YouTube and reselling and my God that I've been doing the, I've, I've, this weekend and just a bit before that, I've been doing the website, updating the website again. Um, I've been doing my merch as well. I did my merch this weekend. Um, so, you know, I've, and I've, I've actually got videos scheduled on my channel till the 1st of May. So I've literally done two months worth of videos um, in the last kind of uh, one or two months as well. So like I've really been like hitting it hard with YouTube and website and merch and eBay and oh my God, just everything really and, and crypto as well and all the rest of it. Um, so I haven't really had much time to fit them in. However, I thought to myself, well, when am I ever going to get time? I'm never going to get time because 
the amount of work you can do with eBay, you know, the amount of listing you can do, the amount of photog photographing you can do is endless, you know, as long as you've got a backlog of stock, you know, you can, or you can keep getting stock constantly, it's endless and endless and endless, so um, I definitely just think I need to make time, and I'm going to do that, I've got the script ready, I need to charge my camera up, and I need to get some... Um, some ideas with how I'm going to do this in terms of direction and stuff, because I like directing them and stuff. Um, but yeah, I really do want to do them. So I'm not going to give a time frame because I really don't want to pressure myself with them. Oh, that ne nearly fell off then. I don't want to pressure myself with them. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I am going to get them done. Um, I'm going to try and do the four that I've got planned. Um, and that, oh no, sorry, have I got five planned? I don't know. I've got four or five planned. And it's going to take a bit of a different layout this time. I'm going to actually do it as a series. Or I think I'm going to do it as a series. And uh, the, the, maybe, a, I don't want to say they're too different because they're not going to be that different. They're going to be low production quality they're going to be amateurish uh they're going to call upon you know like my comedy inspirators inspirators is that word my the people who i look up to in physical comedy so rick mayall aid edmondson the chuckle brothers rowan atkinson uh some like the really old time physical comedians like harry langdon uh people like that they you know they're still going to have that very uh, slapstick kind of vibe, maybe not slapstick, but um, just that kind of very physical comedy vibe opposed to, you know, more verbal comedy, because that's my style, that's what I like to do, um, but yeah, it's going to be good, I've got some, I've got some nice um, stories in the mix that can really, really play heavily on that uh, physical comedy side so when you actually watch the comedy shorts um n you know like now knowing who my kind of the people who were who inspired me were you can probably pick out the parts of like the characters like some of the characters are a little bit like mr bean or some of them are a little bit like you know a bit dumb because you've got these different uh, in physical comedy you've got these different um, personality type so you've got like a crude comedian or you've got the, the stupid kind of comedian in terms of the actual character that, that comedian is portraying at the time so if you have um, you know if you go down the route of the, of the dumb you know the kind of the stupid or the dunce um, in terms of in that character you can you can actually get quite a lot of comedy out of that as a as a not necessarily a personality type because that would be going too far but you could get a lot of comedy out of that kind of style of character, just as you would out of a crude character or anything like that. But I, I certainly gravitate towards the, the the dumb kind of character and then the crude character. They're my kind of two. Um, if I would have to go with one, I would say the... I'm, I'd say I'm probably a bit better at the dumb character, even though I would like to be better at the crude character. Um, so the crude character would be more like Bads, although he's more verbal comedy than anything else, you know. He's a little bit of physical comedy, but it's more verbal comedy with Bads. Um, but then, obviously, uh, someone else would be more, uh, you know, the kind of dumb, the more physical, the more acted uh, comedy, you know, in terms of a character would be, um, you know, I, I'd be more dumb. I, I, I'd gravitate towards that. And, and that person who's always scratching his head or, you know, just doing stupid things without realising what they're doing, you know. Uh, it's a very, very good and very clever comedic style. And, you know, comedy isn't hard, really. It's not actually that hard. But there is a layering behind it. There is structure behind what people do uh, to make people laugh, especially in physical comedy, uh, opposed to more verbal comedy. Like there, obviously, there's a lot of structure in verbal comedy as well. But with physical comedy, I feel it's more there's kind of more weight on how you're going to do this and how you're going to direct this and how you're going to play out this scene because. It's, it's a lot harder to get right and get that, that laugh perfect. Like, if, if we go take the case of Mr. Bean, for example, Rowan Atkinson, the level of detail that he put into each and every scene is absolutely incredible. We go back all the way back to Charlie Chaplin in his silent films, the level of detail that he put in was incredible, you know? I mean, like, that's what I'd really like to do. I'd like to have the time to be able to act out a scene, like, several hundred times or, like, maybe like 50 times or something to make sure I get it really, really perfect. Um, but I've not got that luxury. So then I always kind of feel like when I do the comedy shorts, they're not, 
like they're good, they're, they're okay, they're, and they're good in terms of being bad, you know, like, you know what I'm saying, so like, they're, they're, they're so bad, they're good, that's what I'm trying to say, um, but I'd really like to actually make them more polished, and I'm not trying to say that I'd get rid of the amateurish style or anything, because I think that that's what gives some of the, the appeal to them, but I certainly would like to, um, you know, kind of polish them up a little bit in terms of direction, camera work, etc., and the actual acting that I do in them. And then you can still get that sense of amateurishness, or you can still get a sense of kind of feeling, um, I don't know, that it's, you know, a kind of lower budget or whatever. You still get that sense but it's just a little bit more polished, so you still, you, you can you can laugh a bit harder at it, you know? But it's not necessarily that I want to upgrade the cameras or do it so it's incredibly, um, you know, well, well produced. You know, I think some of the um, kind of appeal to a lot of comedy is that, uh, or maybe not comedy, but even like filmmaking in general, you know, sometimes they make films on camcorders and it's to get like that kind of amateurish feel that they're then going for that actually makes it more appealing to watch. Um, so, you know, I'm, that's kind of, I suppose, where I'm going a little bit. But anyway, um, I will just um, quickly have a look in the chat. So I'll just go down here. I would say his influences include David Brent from The Office or Alan Partridge. Maybe Alan Partridge, but I've not. I didn't watch him as a kid. I watched the first proper people who inspired me as a kid, or inspired me in quotes because I didn't really know they were inspiring me at the time. I was just laughing at it. Um, would be uh, Aiden, Aid Edmondson, and Wick Mail um, because I watched Bottom from tw like twelve, thirteen years old. Um, you know, and then more recently I've gone back and I've watched the young ones and things like that. Um, but I suppose maybe it's more verbal comedy, but there is physical comedy is in it, isn't there? So, um, but Bottom, that was major for me. And, you know, that, that plays on the violent comedian. That plays on, you know, just the, the comedy of violence, really. Of just slap, like, like slapstick taken to the extreme, basically, that is. And, you know, and, and it's so funny that that actually works because you wouldn't think that actually works as a concept. If you say to someone, oh yeah, we're going to produce a TV show where two people just beat the di living daylights out of each other and that's going to make everyone laugh. You know, you kind of think to yourself, you know, like, is it or is it just going to, like, people just going to turn off because it's just boring. But the way they did it, you know, the way they structured it, the way, the way the characters were built up as well and the, the kind of insecurity behind Rick Mail's character, because he was quite insecure. He was very kind of like, um, you know, open about, oh yeah, I want to go out and get all these girls and stuff. But inside, I feel his character was very insecure. Now, I don't know, I can't prove, because I didn't know Rick Mail, but I can't prove that he was somewhat, you know, pulling, drawing from himself, from himself from into his character but you know the way I create my characters like bads and stuff I draw from you know some bits of myself like bads of course as I mentioned is like the shadow of myself or the darker side of myself the manipulative version of myself the, the uh, essentially someone who I would be in a different life if if I had different life experiences so um you know but I, I do feel like maybe he drew a little bit from himself from from different characters I'm not saying he was an insecure guy or anything or anything like that but I'm saying that there might have been some elements of that in his life or there might have been some elements of um, sexual desire in his life maybe maybe this was taken from when he was younger when he was like my age and he was younger and he and he had those and more of those feelings you know um, but I do kind of think that every kind of comedian draws on things from themselves to produce their characters and and when they do so that actually gives them the ability to act it a lot better um, because some of the scenes where I've done with bads I've been able to be a lot more expressive and a lot more kind of easily able to act that whereas if you watch other comedy shorts where maybe you know when I was acting as Danielle you know in the date night um, that was very very wooden the acting in that was terrible like absolutely terrible. and none of my acting is good you know just let me get that out there none of my i'm not trying to say i'm a brilliant actor i'm not anywhere near that at all i'm crap but the acting as bads was better or was less crap than the acting as danielle because i fit into the i can shoe well, i say shoehorn is that right i don't know but i can fit into the role of bads a lot more than i can fit into the role of danielle Mainly because that's a girl I'm playing and, and Bads is a guy, but also because Bads is a part of myself 
uh, but a part of, uh, you know, my ego, a part of my um, shadow self or wh whatever you want to call it, that kind of slightly darker side that I feel that a lot of people have, you know, it may be smaller for others and larger for, for other people or whatever, but I think we all have a little bit of a, uh, you know, that little glint in your eye that sometimes you just feel a little bit kind of bad or a little bit mischievous, you know, that's the best word to describe it, mischievous, you know. Um, but anyway, so I'll just quickly look in chat. Um, hi everyone, just watched a vid on eBay's channel ad, was good. Thank you very much, I'm glad people have enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some value out of it as well. Um, I, it was only a very short interview, there was only a couple of questions she asked me. Um, I just tried my best to answer from what I've been doing in the last four years, or close to four years. Um, you know, I'm not a, an expert at this or anything like that, but hopefully you will have gained some information from that. Also, um, I, do, I, I did mention before, but I've not really touched upon it uh, too much. I don't think I've really touched upon it too much. I am doing a, um, I'm doing a, oh, oh wait, sorry, I'm, I'm down the chat here. Sorry, I'm missing out on all this chat. Um, one sec. Oh no, don't add moderator, what are you doing? I see ads is being modest still. I'm not being modest. I, I understand that there are things I can do well and there are things that I can't do well. And I uh, understand that there's certain things that I'm very, very good at. Um, but, you know, uh, there's, there's other things that, you know, I'm not brilliant at. So I'll I'll identify when I'm good at something. I'll identify when I'm not good at something. But, yeah. Um, oh, do you mean... I thought you were meaning maybe the comedy shorts or something. I'm not sure. But maybe you actually meant the chat, the eBay chat. I'm not sure. But maybe I am being a little bit modest about the eBay chat. But, you know, that's what I was taught to do. Like, you know, Z and Nick and all the other, like, American guys, they all stay humble. And I don't feel the need to... You know, oh, I was on the eBay channel. Look at me. How amazing am I? Because that's... What? what? So what? You know, yeah, you're on the eBay channel for a little bit. It's only got, you know, it's got like 8,000 subs or something. You know, it's not a, a big deal or anything. So I'm not going to make it into a huge deal. And even if it had 800,000 or 500,000, okay, yeah, I might push it a little bit. You know, I might milk it a little bit. And maybe I'd get a little bit, you know, uh, above myself for, for a few minutes or whatever. But... You know, I'm still going to remain as humble as I can be because it's nothing, you know, if I'm, what I'm trying to say is I'm a person just like you. There's no difference. There's no difference in anyone on the planet. You know, we're just all people experiencing life. So what's, you know, what, what, how can I possibly be any more than any other individual or, or how could I possibly be? Um, or how could I even possibly get myself into that mindset of uh, of that power mindset of um, you know feeling like I'm this big a big person who deserves everyone's attention and all that? It, it's the most ridiculous mindset to ever be in, and those who are in it are only tricking themselves because eventually they'll understand that actually they've they've lost quite a lot of the friends and the family and, and whatever who were who were meaningful to them because they've just acted like an idiot and, and, and just pushed them all, all the way really. Whereas I'd rather act quite um you know, down to earth and stuff so then I can keep those people in my life. But you know, that's just my opinion. Um so yeah. Uh, I'll just quickly um go down the chat. I'm your biggest fan. Who who said that? Oh, you are your biggest fan, that's awesome. Yeah I am, yeah. Uh, well, you have to be, don't you? Because, uh, you know, I mean, especially with the comedy shorts, because the comedy shorts were, um, they were out there. They, they were out there. And when I published them, people, so, like, a lot of people got them. A lot of people were totally on board. The first one that I did got an incredible, you know, positive response. And in fact, all of them got an incredible positive response in the comments specifically. However, when you look at the thumbs down, I mean, one of the songs, my God, one of the songs got like 44 thumbs down to like 30 thumbs up or something. So, you know, when when things happen like that, you kind of realize, oh, actually, I'm going to not care what people think. And I'm just going to live for how I want to live and uh, be my own biggest fan, because if I if I don't do that, it's going to it's going to kill me, you know, trying to trying to um, satisfy everyone and stuff. So, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not talking about recycling. No, I'm not talking about recycling. Well, I wasn't a minute ago. What have I missed? I'm at Chester train station at the moment waiting for a connection. Waiting for a connect. Oh, waiting for a, a train connection. I thought you meant waiting for a 
uh, a Wi-Fi connection or something. Uh, yeah, Bottom was class. Uh, the live shows were funny too. I've not... Um, I, I've, I think I've watched one or two of the live shows, but I've not watched many of them. I watched the, the series, obviously, but I don't know whether... I, I might have done when I was a little bit younger. I, I know I've watched bits of them on YouTube, but I don't know whether I've watched a full one. Um, comedy influences ads, yeah. Oh, comedy influences. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Comedy influences. Um... Absolutely nothing, figured not. Wow, ads, how did you stay on topic with your eBay interview? I don't know, Wade. I really don't know how the hell I stayed on topic with that, but yeah. Uh, I, I just kind of knew I had to, you know when you kind of know you have to be in the moment and, and be kind of fairly prepared for something? Um, I was just like that, and I was like, right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it well. Um, you know, it was one of them opportunities that I couldn't miss out on, you know, so I just had to kind of step up and uh, and do it because I mean, I got the email and I responded straight away. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do I'll do that. No trouble. I, I was, uh, you know, it's one of them opportunities. Like if you're an eBay seller, you know, what is your aspiration other than being an eBay seller, right? Like the aspirations in this job are only to grow your eBay business, right? So that's not enough for me. I know that sounds like kind of ungrateful that, you know, me saying that, but like just growing my eBay business isn't enough for me. That's why I do YouTube. That's why I do other things alongside. That's why I do crypto and stuff. I want to um, create something, you know, I want to create content. I want to, you know, help other people. I want to do, you know, I want to do other things, you know, I don't just want to grow an eBay business. But saying that, if you are an eBay seller, and you get the opportunity to go on, as I've mentioned, you know, not long ago, a few minutes ago, if you get that opportunity to do something like that, you know, go on the eBay uh, YouTube channel or whatever, um, and, and, and speak about your kind of experiences as a seller, then that's kind of like a, a another thing to add to your body of work or portfolio of work or whatever, that um, is just quite cool, you know, it's just quite nice to to think that that's in there now. And, and I always think with my YouTube channel, like all I'm trying to do is just get so many videos on YouTube. Like I want to get like, um, by the time like 50, I want like blooming five, 10,000 videos on YouTube. And then like, if I wanted to, like when I'm really old, like when I'm like 80 or whatever, because by the time I'm 80, I'd have tons of videos. Like by the time I'm 80, and let's say I have to go in a home or whatever, I don't know. But if I have to go in a home, Imagine that. I've got my entire life, all those comedy shorts, all those different things I've done. You know, if I do any, if I go abroad anywhere, whatever, I do vlogs on that and I upload them to the channel. I've got my entire life to sit back and relax when I'm 80, all day, every day, to look at what I've done, you know, and what I've achieved. And, and that's so nice. And all the people who I've experienced it with on and off YouTube, of course, or on YouTube and in in you know actually in the flesh you know if i'm recording videos with people and that's awesome you know that's like really cool and if my grandkids want to see me when i'm younger and i've always said this you know this has been a big one for me if i get kids and i get have grandkids then they can see me when i'm like their age let's say they're like well they couldn't see me if i oh no they could see me if i was like 17 or 18 because i've got other videos on other channels but um you know let's say they grow up to be like 19 20 they can see me at 19 or 20 and what I was doing, that is a remarkable thing. That is, like, I don't think people fully grasp how important this is, like social media. Uh, I know there's so many people, you know, who do grasp how important it is, but they kind of grasp it in the fact of, oh, let's generate leads or make sales or do this. I'm not that bothered about generating leads or making sales. Obviously, I'll, you know, if I'm in you know, social media marketing, or I mean, eBay or whatever, of course, that's something I've got to look for to, to get some money, you know, I can't live for free. But at the same time, it's not all that I see that social media is valuable for. I see the kind of thing of, well, in, tw you know, as long as like, certain sites are still up and running, and the internet's still going in 100 years or 200 years, people like from 200 years can be watching this right now, like in 200 years time, when we get there, they could be watching this right now of someone in the early 21st century. Now imagine this, now, now to really get perspective, 
Imagine if we could watch people. Imagine if YouTube was around 200 years ago, like 1800s, and we could watch people. We would get such a better understanding of historical events. We would get stu such a better understanding of what happened in the world. This is incredible. This is the biggest thing, like, ever, you know? And people just don't seem to get it, but, you know? Uh, don't plan... Don't plan too far ahead, ads. You never know what's around the corner. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. And you can't necessarily see around corners, but it doesn't really matter anyway. Like, if, you know, if I don't do videos, it's not, you know, it's like if something were to happen, whatever it may be, I don't know what could happen. There's a, a plethora of different things that could happen, including health or money or what, you know, it doesn't matter. But if anything were to happen, then that happens. But for the moment, nothing's happening. And, um, I'm going to continue living and I'm going to continue doing the content. I'm going to continue trying my best to help people and stuff. And, and that's that, you know, and that's that. So, yeah, but I mean, if something did happen, then I would stop and it wouldn't bother me. You know, I just I just couldn't fulfill certain desires or certain dreams and that's OK, you know. Um, but yeah, so um, make money. What are you on about? Make money. Many Money Mental UK says make money. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what that's pertaining to or anything. I've got a selfie stick in the tap mountain. Need to find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, selfie stick's pretty good. I've got a... Um, I showed it on a video not long ago. You probably saw it. Um, a gimbal, which is really, really cool. Which is just um, absolutely amazing. Um, so, um, I, f I don't know whether I have... Uh, I'm not sure they'll be a YouTube by the time I'm 18. Well, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, there is always the idea that, um, you know, other platforms can come along and replace YouTube. I get that. Um, but, you know, I kind of think that First Mover Advantage does actually have, uh, holds quite a high place kind of thing because... You just look at YouTube, like YouTube was like, I'm pretty sure the first video platform, or maybe it wasn't the first, but it was certainly like one that grew very fast and, and that was that was like the first really, really, really well-known one. Um, so first mover advantage does play a part and don't um, kind of disregard the community of YouTube because if another video sharing site comes out, right, and it can do all the things that YouTube can do and maybe a couple of extras or whatever, then... Do you think that everyone's going to move over there? I don't think everyone's going to move over there because I think they're going to stay on what they know, on what they're familiar with. You've got to remember that um, people don't like change. A lot of people don't like change. A lot of people like things to stay the same, right? So although, you know, humans can kind of deal with a certain level of change, like, for example, upgrades to the YouTube platform in certain ways and stuff, um, and things like that, they like those changes, they like different things popping up on YouTube and stuff. If another video platform came up and it could do all the things YouTube can do, then they're not going to go over there, they're just going to stay on YouTube. Now, if it could do a lot more than YouTube. Like, if there was a huge revolution, like, it was as fast as YouTube, you could upload things even faster, however they do that, I don't know. Um, you know, the user interface was a lot more friendly. Um, you know, maybe you could make a lot more money on these platforms opposed to YouTube. Um, you know, then, then yeah, brilliant. That would, uh, you know, if people would change and would go over there. But I can't see anything like that coming up for at least a few years. Now, of course, you might be wondering, well, hang on a minute, because you're, you, you're involved with cryptocurrency and stuff. Surely there are decentralized, uh, you know, uh, video sharing sites that may be able to beat out YouTube. Yes, there are. There's things like, um, oh, what's it called? There's DTube, of course, but there's another one. There's, um, oh, what's it called? Bit, BitTube. There's DTube and BitTube, which are decentralized video sharing sites that allow you to make money off them without um, being uh, tied to a company. So they're not owned by any one person or in any one place. And they are obviously based on a blockchain. Uh, and I won't get into cryptocurrency too much, but um, they're basically a lot more... I um, don't know how to describe it. Like, they're, they're not going to rob you of money or anything. Like, you know, YouTube takes like 30% or whatever it is of ads or 30% of super chats or what I don't even know what it is but you know like YouTube take money BitTube or DTube or whatever they don't take a cut of that because they're not a company they're just a D they're, they're, I think they I think it's known as a 
D A O or a D O A or something. Decentralized uh, autonomous or yeah, D A O, decentralized autom autonomous organization. Uh, and basically, they just get upheld. Uh, you know, basically, they're um, upheld by the developers. So the developers work on the site and everything. The de developers have a stake in the platform, but they do not own the platform themselves. And of course, it's based on. Um, like uh or oh, what's it well democracy so um you know basically all the people who use the platform have individual rights or have like an individual shared ownership of the platform um which is pretty cool you know it's revolutionary but the problem with these uh, daos or centralized autonomous organizations or whatever i said was they the technology of them isn't up to par yet and i think we've got at least another two to three years before any of those can ri even attempt to rival YouTube. I reckon five to 10 years, but I, I seriously do think that, that the, the internet will be a very different place in 10 years time. It's just whether, uh, now, now what YouTube could do is it could actually become one of these decentralized autonomous organizations itself. I don't know how they do that, to be honest, but I'm pretty sure they probably could do that. And, maybe, and then they could change over to being on a blockchain um, in order to survive, basically. But the problem with that is that, that all the people who work at YouTube would have to uh, basically give up the jobs because there wouldn't be an organization. There wouldn't be a profitable organization anymore. It'd just be a decentralized... Uh, or, I'm not even going to say it anymore. DAO. DAO. Um, decentralized Autonomous Organization. Yeah, I, I keep trying to say it, but... Um, yeah, so there wouldn't be that. However... If you gave, it, obviously we're being on a blockchain and obviously it's utilizing cryptocurrency. If you gave all those YouTube employees a certain percentage of the cryptocurrency that is used to transact on the new website that is now on a blockchain and decentralized, you could actually get, provide them with a full-time income by doing that. I mean, look at sites like Steam It, you know, things like that. Um, so... You know, there is ways around that and they could do that. And that's what they probably do need to do to survive in the next five to ten years. In my opinion, I'm not saying it's uh, it's going to be fact or anything. I can't I can't see that far forward. But, um, you know, it's very interesting. You know, I, I mean, I look into everything, you know, social media and stuff. I, I, know, I mean, I've been in it. I've been involved this year. Well, this year or next year, it'll be ten years. I've been involved in social media marketing. Um, you know, from very, very humble beginnings of trying to do a few bits on Twitter and trying to get more followers on Twitter and stuff to, you know, doing splash pages and doing, uh, you know, email marketing and do it. Oh, my God. So much Facebook marketing and oh, God, so, so, so much, you know, so, so much. But, um, you know, so I kind of have seen the flow of it from about 2009, 2010 kind of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, two, about two, yeah, it would have been about 2009, 2000, it might have been 2010, so it might be nine years this year. Um, but you know, I kind of seen all that and I mean, I've been on eBay for, for longer than the four years, but uh, very often on, you know, as I've mentioned in the past. Um, but yeah, so it, it's very interesting the whole, you, will, will YouTube be around in X amount of time? But it's been around since what, 2005 now? So it's been around 13 years already. Uh, oh. One sec. Ads, how did you say on topic for your... Ads, is the lockup full again since your 100 listings? No, it's not full. Um, I mean, all the shelving is full. Like, there's boxes on all the shelves. Um, but it's not full. Like, the lockup isn't... Um, you know, it, it isn't full by any standard. But I don't know what we've, we've got to do, really, topic-wise. Um, right, so we've got... I'm, I'm going to rub this what do you want off because I think we've kind of covered that. Well, kind of. I say we covered that. No, Not many people have asked questions anyway, so it's fine. Uh, comedy shorts, I've done that. I'll leave the 40 likes on. So I wanted to talk a little bit because this week, uh, including today, um, including right now, um, <laughs> as I always am on Thursday talks, um, I've been very anxious this week. Obviously, a lot of people know, and, and I don't like going into this all the time because I feel like I'm just and I've said this before as well because this is how many times I've gone into it but you know I feel like I'm just repeating myself repeating myself repeating myself but of course as a lot of people know I've had, I've had I have issues with anxiety and things like that um and this week I actually realized something about anxiety and relaxation so if you know I don't know whether you'll know what polar thinking is right 
So, polar thinking is very interesting. It's the ability to basically hold two things that you thought were completely different, you thought were like, you know, completely opposite ends of the spectrum, in your mind as one thing at the same time. So I'm going to try and demonstrate this to you now, which is what I learned about anxiety and uh, relaxation. So it's basically about holding agree and disagree in your mind at the same time and realising that you can't have someone who disagrees without someone who, uh, who agrees because in order to understand that you disagree with someone, you have to have someone to disagree with. Or Sorry, no, to understand if you disagree with someone, someone else has to have an opposing view and then you kind of, because one person agrees, one person disagrees, etc., it's kind of like, oh, I'm not really explaining this very well, but it, it's very, very hard to explain polar thinking, but kind of more of a feeling than a, than a thought. But basically, you can't, what I'm trying to say is you can't have agree without disagree. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, because, oh, wait, I wrote it down, actually. One sec. I'll have to, I'll have to get this or else I'm not going to be, oh, my God, I've got another message. My God. I tell you, my Instagram's popping off like crazy. Right, I'll have to see. It's the same as thinking, I sent this to someone this morning, it's the same as thinking that without someone to disagree with you on a point, how are you meant to know what you actually mean by it because uh, you have no opposing argument to compare it to. So that's it. So if you don't have, if you have a, 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 you, know, a uh, you know, a thought on a matter and then, you know, you've not got anyone to compare that thought with, how, how are you meant to know whether that thought is disagreed or agreed with? You can't do. So you have to have someone to agree with you or disagree with you. Therefore, agreeing and disagreeing can be compared of the same thing. But I'm going to go into this a little bit more simply with anxiety and relaxation. So I'm going to have to get this up because... because um, One sec. All right. right. So once you've completed an activity... I'm not going to write all this down. Activity. I've not really used the board much today, have I? So once you've completed an activity that is hard, right? So that uh, once you complete an activity in your anxiety that is really, really quite hard for you, you've been very, very anxious, right? Let me have a look here. Uh, that is hard. The treat, the treat from this, right, when you've done that activity is... Um, is the feeling, is the feeling, I know where I'm going now, I've got it, so it, the problem is I, I think so much that I know what I under, I know what I'm saying, but I can't communicate it very well, um, but yeah, so the tweet is feeling, uh, what is, what was it now, um, feeling, uh, accomplishment, and, relaxation because when if, if you've ever been anxious which like me if you're anything like me you'll be anxious a lot of the time um when you when you've been anxious from an event i know i'm writing that terribly but you'll have to deal with it when you've been anxious from an event what happens at the night time is you know once all the anxiety is dissipated you feel this sense of feeling oh let you know that let go and that release right and that is because you're feeling relaxed, right? You've, you, you, you basically had all that anxiety. It's built up all the midday. You're not feeling good. You're feeling, you're feeling terrible, actually. Um, and then, you know, once all that's dissipated, you maybe go for a shower. That always helps for me. You sit down. You watch something nice on TV with a cup of tea or something. You get in bed and all that anxiety dissipates and you feel so relaxed, like so relaxed. Your body just falls, right? So if we say this, I'll have to open this up again. One sec. So, if we say that, um, so, in this way, so, in this way, anxiety is actually helping you, is actually helping you feel relaxed. So, you see what I've done there? Will Relax. I'm spelling, my spelling is terrible today, relax, right, sorry. So, um, 
So, if you are anxious, right, we've established that you're anxious, and then you go to become relaxed at the night time, like I'll be doing tonight because I've been anxious most of the day. I'll get a shower, I'll watch something nice on TV, I'll be really relaxed. But um, basically, what's happening is your anxiety is proving to you or is giving you the ability to feel a higher level of relaxation because you've been so anxious that you actually, when you come to be relaxed, you're now experiencing that relaxation in a way that you, uh, you know, wouldn't normally do. It's an intensified version of relaxation because you've had, you know, more anxiety. So what's actually happening is your anxiety, again, I'm going to have to go on here again. Um, ah, here we go, right. Because without the feeling of anxiety, the feeling of, of, of relaxation wouldn't be so strong. Yeah, so without... Without the anxiety, the feeling of relaxation, I think that's how you spell it, wouldn't be as strong. So therefore, if you've got this feeling of anxiety, and then you have this relaxation afterwards, that anxiety is making you understand, you know, in relation to the uh, relaxation, what, what those two things actually are. Like, for example, you can't necessarily have, if you had anxiety all the time, this is a really simple way to, like, basically explain what polar thinking is. If you had anxiety all the time and you never experienced relaxation, how would you actually know you had anxiety? You wouldn't. It would just be a feeling. It would just be you know, one constant feeling that you couldn't compare with anything. There'd be no comparison. So it'd be one one straight feeling. However, if you have anxiety and then you have relaxation, you, you, the, the, basically you can now compare them against each other and essentially those two things are one because you can't have one without the other because if you had like relaxation all the time then you wouldn't know what it is to call it relaxation because it would just be one feeling or you have anxiety all the time it would just be one feeling so therefore if you have both of them together then it's it's kind of just like one now polar thinking is incredibly hard to explain because you have to kind of feel that everything's one you have to kind of feel that all these different examples are of one kind of uh, wavelength. And it does take quite a while to actually get in that mindset of, of understanding that these things are one or understanding that these you can't have one without the other kind of thing. Because if I, so, so if, I, if, if I were to say anxiety is the thing that brings you relaxation, this is, now this is the kicker. This is the thing that what all this is all about. If I was to say that anxiety was the, was the fundamental reason that you were feeling more relaxed, because that is true. You have your anxiety and then your body relaxes down even further because it's been so anxious, because it's been working itself up, right? So if that's true, if your anxiety is creating a higher level of relaxation, well, you have nothing to fear about your anxiety because it's actually giving you a state of more pleasure in the end. Okay, is it painful for the for the present? Is it painful for the moment? Yes, I'm not kind of with with refuking that. Is that right? I think it is. Um, but I'm not kind of pushing that to the side. But if you can think in that moment of, hang on a minute, you know, I'm going to be really relaxed later on because of this. I'm going to be. It's going to be so nice. I'm going to be able to sit down with a cup of tea. It's going to be really really nice. And you think to yourself that because essentially that, that that's what the anxiety is giving you and then you start to realize well hang on a minute if that's giving me relaxation then you know why why is it that i need to necessarily be overly anxious now and then you realize oh hang on i, I don't think i really need to be overly anxious now and in the process of doing this diagram on the board, well, diagram, this writing on the board, you'll have seen, well, you probably won't have seen it, but I will have noticed a very curious thing. My anxiety from the start of this to now the end of this has massively reduced because I understand polar thinking. 
And now I understand polar thinking, you see, if you can understand polar thinking, you'll realise that all this anxiety is just this kind of, it, it's kind of this mirage or this thing that tries to pull you in to, to getting more anxious, to being more, um, you know, worked up and stuff. Whereas if you understand that relaxation and anxiety work as one, you don't need to feel the anxiety anymore. And therefore, well, you know, I'd have to say you win, you know, you win. And then that means that you can just put a pen on there like that. And then you can go over to the chat feeling pretty good, right? So yeah, anyway, I don't know whether anyone actually got that, but I, I, it helped me nonetheless. Um, I have anxiety in a minute. Main problem is that it won't let me relax. You, you can't relax. So you can't, um, like you literally wouldn't be able to get in bed after a shower and relax down. Because I, I um, when I was really bad, I couldn't do that. Like even after a shower, I couldn't relax. Like I literally, it would like, my sleep would be bad. Everything would be bad, right? Like, but the last kind of six months or so, a year, well, maybe even two years. Um, but that sort of time, I can control it. I can, I can switch it on and off, kind of thing. And and partly because of that, it's partly because of polar thinking, partly because of a few other different things. You know, spirituality, um, uh, philosophy, um, a feeling of, um, I don't know, that I am enough. I think I think that's a big one. I think it's this feeling of you have to feel you are enough. You know, you have to feel that you are um, enough for the universe. You are enough for the world. You are enough for uh, your family, your friends. You are enough for anyone in your life, and you are ma mostly enough for yourself. That's the kicker. If you if you can understand that, then some of that anxiety is alleviated. But this polar thinking is quite good. Now, it's not to say that it's the one thing that can help you massively, um, but it's one of those factors. Like if you use this in conjunction with trying to uh, build up maybe more self-esteem, you know, some people it might be self-esteem. So you use that to build, you, you, you use uh, some different tricks and tips to build up your self-esteem. You try and think about polar thinking. You look into various different things as well. Maybe you uh, have therapy to kind of open up your subconscious, whatever it may be. You use all these different things as kind of methods to um, to basically just bring you up, you know? Um, and and like, like today, for example, right? So two days ago, I had two panic attacks, right? Now I've not had a panic attack in Oh God, it must be, um, I don't know, like two years. Like I've literally not had a panic, a panic attack in like 18 months or two years. Two days ago, I had two in the space of um, about five, 10 minutes. And normally when you have a panic attack, if you've had one, you'll know that generally one might follow quite quickly after. And you might have a succession. You might have quite a few of them. Um, you know, it depends on your resilience because some people just pass out. Unfortunately, my brain won't let me pass out. I, I literally had anxiety one day for like, like literally my heart was beating so fast, like all day, like so, like for so long, it was like six hours or something. Um, and I wouldn't pass out because uh, that's one of the problems, right? I, I'm, uh, or, or I used to be very, very afraid of unconsciousness. Now I'm more, now I'm quite happy about unconsciousness actually, but I used to be very afraid of unconsciousness. So my brain wouldn't let me pass out. My body was going crazy. I'm like, oh God, I'm just in this horrible cycle of, oh my God, I'm going round, I'm going round. So I had the panic attack the other day and it, it wasn't actually too bad. I thought to myself, you know what? I'm pretty bad here but I'm just gonna get on with my life. Again, like we talked about the other, other week, uh, transcendence of positive and negative, in that moment, I could have been like, oh my God, I've got a panic attack, oh God, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? But instead of doing that, I was like, I was talking to someone at the time, and I thought to myself, right, I'll just keep talking. I just keep, as we, we were walking, I'll just keep walking and talking, right? As if by magic, it slowly just died down. Because I understand that anxiety is a fear. And fear is nothing to be afraid of, you know? The, the, you know, you could be scared of, oh, you know, um, the kind of symptoms of a panic attack, but you can't be scared of, or you shouldn't be scared of the fear, or you could you, you maybe try and find ways to get over that fear, you know? I'm, you know, I mean, I, my, my biggest fear was the anxiety, um, but now it, it's not so much that, you know? 
Um, try using Rishi tea. What's that? I've never, I've never heard of Rishi tea. It's because your mind tells you, you that you won't sleep, Gemma. Yeah, it can be that you might. Yeah, I suppose. Um, also, like, if you try to go to sleep, if you're just in that moment of you, you, you want, like, you're trying to go to sleep, then it won't, like, you, you won't go to sleep because you're trying too hard to go to sleep. Um, whereas, you know, you like thinking to yourself, oh my God, I've got to get to sleep. Why can't I go to sleep? I hate this anxiety. Why can't I go to sleep? Why can't I go to sleep? Why can't I go to sleep? The best thing to do is not go to sleep. Like literally the best thing to do is just watch TV or maybe not watch TV, but I don't know, do just do something because then you will relax down further. Take your mind off it. You know, maybe go watching TV or looking at screens and stuff isn't the best form of advice I could give you. But it's better than just trying to go to sleep. You know, maybe you could do something else that's away from screens and social media and stuff. Um, but if you can't do something else like that, then just do something to take your mind off going to sleep. And then you'll relax down a bit more and then you'll go to sleep, you know. Um, but that was a big fear of mine. I had a fear for a few, uh, maybe a month or two, where I actually couldn't go to sleep out of fear of dying. Um, but now I don't have as big a fear of death because I've worked through a lot of stuff in counselling and stuff. So um, now I'm just like, yeah, go to sleep. If you, whatever happens, happens. You know, it's all right. I've, I'm I'm happy. I've I've, I've lived well. I've I've done what I wanted to do uh, for a lot of for the most part. You know, and um, if anything was to happen, then it, then anything happens. You know, and I, I know I'm gonna get up the next morning anyway. It's very unlikely that something's gonna happen, but. Um, I'm just like, yeah, take me, you know, I like literally sometimes before I go to sleep, that's what I actually say. And I get so much satisfaction in actually just saying like to w whatever you whatever you believe in. I don't actually have any religion. I don't have any philosophy necessarily. I don't um, have any um, uh, commitments or anything like that. I don't have any. I believe in nothing, is what I'm saying. I believe in nothing. I don't know anything about the universe or anything like that. I haven't a clue. But it's nice to just literally say the words out loud. And it, maybe you are religious. Maybe just saying, you know, take me God or whatever. Or, or whatever it may be. I just say those words. You know, I just say, take me. And then I go to sleep and I'm like, yeah, this is brilliant. And then I wake up feeling refreshed and renewed. And I'm happy, you know, just to get on with the next day. And I, I think it, it, it comes in the exploration that... Conscious, unconsciousness is um, it is kind of like necessary for consciousness because if you were if you were conscious all the time then and you didn't go to sleep then you you'd be you'd be really really tired you'd be you'd be irritable you'd be you know all that sort of stuff so if you understand that kind of unconsciousness or sleep is a necessary requirement for um, you know a healthy human mind and a healthy human body. And uh, you can, re and not just knowing that, but actually understanding it, in, you know, really intrinsically understanding it, um, then you can literally just go to sleep with very, very little fear, you know, and just be like, right, I'm going. And and this only, this is only really relate in relation to if you've got necessarily a fear of the unconscious in terms of a fear that you're going to die when you go to sleep or something, but. It can work, you know, if you've just got a general fear of unconsciousness, I suppose, without, or just a general fear of going to sleep. But it's not always that you have a general fear of going to sleep. It's just simply sometimes that the anxiety keeps you awake. You know, you don't might not have any fear of going to sleep. But because your body's working too hard, you know, it's working in overdrive, you can't go to sleep, you know. Um, and sometimes it happens in your brain as well. Your brain can be spinning around with a load of ideas and then... And then and that then that gets you. But I'm gonna rub this off board and we're gonna talk very quickly. Oh god, where's the oh yeah, see it. And we're gonna talk very quickly about des uh, donuts and desires, because I need to finish off this topic. It was gonna be a longer one today because I've got so much to cover and yeah. I don't even wanna get into it. I've got so much to cover on today's episode. I've done it all though, pretty much. Um so yeah. But it's been a good one today. I liked this one. And don't forget, if you haven't already, do please uh, check out that video, that eBay video. I'd really appreciate it. Because it was nice to make that video, actually. Oh, it's coming off a little bit poor, this, actually. But it's not too bad, though. do 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 na 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 Yes, you love me. And I love you too. Right, okay. You've had enough of my singing now. 
uh, d d staying off social media is a big help. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad for me these days, but, um, yeah, I mean, I love interacting with Instagram. Oh, yeah, also, another plug, just for good measure, follow me on Instagram, adsrobo, at adsrobo96. I'm also doing quotes of the day on Instagram as well, so, yeah, I'm doing quotes of the day on my Instagram stories. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't already, follow me over there. Also, you know, if you want to message me, want to just have a chat or whatever, message me over here, I'll talk about whatever you want, so long as it's not, like, really crazy or whatever, you know, but, you know, within reason, I'll talk about what you want, um, so yeah, adsrobo96 on Instagram, so, donuts and desires, I need to get my phone up again for this one, tell you, I have to write things down now, you know why I have to write things down, and I told you a minute ago, actually, because I have so many thoughts, and I can't get them all out, you know, can't get them out of my mind quick enough to blooming talk about them. Thursday talks, right? Ads thoughts. Ah, brilliant. Yeah, I can write this down. Ads thoughts. Look at this bad boy. Oh, I was meant to write this down before last night. You know what? I was meant to write that down before uh, last night, right? On the tub subject of sleep, right? I was, I was literally, because what I do, I, d I don't like I don't necessarily like to call it meditation because meditation is such a an ugly word these days because a lot of people use the word meditation uh, to kind of satisfy their egos and they're like, oh, do you meditate? And then and then you're like, oh yes, I meditate five hours a day and all this. So I don't necessarily like using the word meditation, but sometimes before I go to sleep or sometimes it's eight o'clock at night, way before I've gone to sleep or anything, I just lie on the bed, you know, I literally remove my cushion. Uh, so then I've got a f complete flat surface and I just lie on the bed and just contemplate things kind of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I was doing that at about 10 to 11 last night. And, uh, you know, I don't even know what happened. Did I fall asleep? I don't know. I, I think I got up. I was meant to get up and write ads thoughts on the top of this, right, for, to, uh, for today. But I got up and... Uh, Turn the computer off and everything. And I must have forgot to bloody write that on the board. So, yeah, you know, so sometimes, I mean, meditation, oh, I say meditation. I say contemplation because I like contemplation better. Contemplate, and, and again, meditation can, it isn't necessarily, you know, tied into a religion. Um, you know, Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, maybe, maybe Hinduism, I suppose. But it's not necessarily really tied into one religion. But it has those kind of vibes to it. So I'd rather say contemplation than meditation. Um, but yeah, uh, ads thoughts. Let's uh, talk about this. So ads thoughts, uh, the donuts one. I need to get me. Uh, I need to get me bloody uh, phone again. I tell you, I'm terrible. This is a terrible bloody show, isn't it? Because I'm right. I'm all over the place today. But I'm not. The you know, problem is, you know what it is. When I do a show like this, when I'm trying to explain things in some clarity, I try and plan it in and I try and like rehearse it a little bit. I have done the last couple of weeks, but this week has been so hectic that I've not been able to like try and think it through properly. Um, so anyway, on uh, Wednesday last week or Tuesday last week, Tuesday last week, I wanted a donut. I wanted a chocolate donut, right? And there is some clarity in this, so please stick with me. Um, I wanted a chocolate donut last week, but I could only find a pink iced one in the supermarket, right? So, could only find, let's put, uh, pink donut. Pink donut. No chocolate ones. So there was no chocolate, right? Now you'll have seen, if you follow me on Instagram, a little story, Snapchatting a little, Snapchatting, uh, snapping a little, um, uh, what's it called? Chocolate donut. Well, I'll get to that in a sec. So I bought it and very much enjoyed it. However, so I bought the pink donut and I very much enjoyed it. However, I still craved the chocolate one the next day. Oh, sorry, I still craved the chocolate one. So the next day, I went down to a different supermarket and purchased some chocolate ones, the ones I showed on Instagram, right? Um, and, and I was very much looking forward to this one because it was what I had originally wanted. But I felt disappointed as I slowly scoffed that ring-shaped treat I realised it was nice, but nothing compared to the lightness of the pink one. Um, you see, I thought the pink one would be boring, but actually it was very refreshing. It seems this experience taught me that I do not know what I want until I am presented with it. So, it's quite funny this, how little things like this can teach you what you want. So, I, I enjoyed the, the pink one. You know, pink one, enjoyed. But I still craved that chocolate one. I had the chocolate one, 
And I know my writing's terrible. Don't break me for it. I don't really care. Um, chocolate. Um, I, I enjoyed, but not that much. Not as much as the pink one. Yet I thought that this chocolate one was the one I really wanted. You know, I really thought this chocolate one, I really wanted that one. Um, so it made me think here, actually. I thought I wanted this one, you know. But after eating that one and comparing the two, I actually really wanted this pink one. And that made me think, of course, what we're going to come on to next is how this uh, matches up to a relationship, right? Because, of course, I'm in that young young guy mindset, you know, sort of get, slowly getting ready for a long-term relationship. And, um, you know, it made me think, hang on a second. I don't, I think, I think that I want, I want or wanted a chocolate donut, you know, or essentially in other terms, I wanted someone who was as wild as me, who was, you know, quite rich, you know, quite, not, 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 I don't mean rich as in financially, I mean rich as in personality, by the way, I'm not rich, well, not yet, anyway, maybe I will be one day, um, but yeah, so, chocolate donut, right, um, I thought I wanted someone like that, someone wild, someone rich, someone, you know, like a chocolate donut, when you eat it, it's very rich and wild and indulgent, right, well, I thought I wanted that, but actually, when I ate the donut, I didn't want that, so really, maybe I don't want someone, so, uh, so rich, maybe I want someone like the pink donut, you know, light. Someone, I, I rub that off, I don't need I. Someone light and uh, easy going, let's say. And I thought, isn't it odd? And I mentioned this a second ago. Isn't it odd how these little life experiences, I'll step back again because I'm probably off camera. How these little life experiences make you understand that actually there's a lot more to eating donuts than you think. You know, that there's so much behind that. You know, your subconscious desires, your... How can this teach us about what we may want out of our life, out of our relationships, out of our friendships, etc. So, yeah, donuts and desires, it's quite, it's quite interesting. So... I really enjoyed having the pink one. I thought, you know, I really want that chocolate one, but turned out it wasn't what I wanted. So, yeah, maybe I should be aiming, or I should be trying to find someone who is not like me in the sense of a chocolate donut, but is more a light and easygoing person because, because don't you see, I didn't realise that I was the chocolate donut. So, when paired with a blooming pink frosted one, who is going to be my wife, my husband, whatever, I don't know, but when paired with that, right, that, that's, a good, that's a good contrast, right? That's a nice, um, that's kind of just really nice, you know, a nice pairing. Whereas if I'm searching for another chocolate person, right, then, then we're going to be way overwhelmed, you know, we're going to be way overwhelmed, it's going to be too wild, it's going to be too, um, it's going to be too much, you know, it's just going to be too chocolatey, it's going to be too rich. Um, so actually, with me being the chocolate donut, I need to find a pink donut, that's what I'm looking for. And also, I don't just mean I, I want to find someone who's light and easy going, I need to find me another actual pink donut, because that pink donut last week was bloody brilliant, and I can't find another pink donut at the supermarket, so I really do need to find myself a pink donut, um, but yeah. Ah, DBG, at least you've got a dating life though, Gemma, mine is not existing. Oh, we're all talking about dating now. I love this analogy, having a chocolate donut is a great, is great for a while, but it soon gets sticky and bo sickly and boring. Having the pink donut is the best way. Yes, very true for, I suppose, for a lot of people. OMG, ads is the chocolate donut I have been looking for. No, 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 don't get into all that. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is a lot of overthinking at the end of the day. It's not the end of the day. It's only just begun. It's two o'clock, for God's sake. Well, at least another... Oh, God. Four... Nine hours of, of waking time, because I go to bed at 11 o'clock. I like going to bed at 11 o'clock sharp. Get in bed at 9 p.m. sharp. Go to bed at 11 o'clock sharp. Well, I say sharp, you know. Not really sharp. But give or take five minutes, you know. Um, but no, I like, I, like, I like my routine. You know, nine, nine in bed. Stop me work for the day at nine. That's it. I don't do any more work at nine. And then nine to 11, nice. 
get it, get go bed at eleven. Get up generally between anywhere between seven and eight, but more recently it's been like seven twenty, something like that, seven half seven, um, and then just work basically. Where where does the jam donut come in? Where does the jam donut come into it? Uh, who would even be a jam donut? I don't even know what. what I don't even know what who would be a jam donut, but okay, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, oh yeah, Darren, I did, I did, um, what's it? I did uh, comment on your daily, uh, not daily vlog, weekly vlog. That was really good. That weekly vlog, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, it was just, yeah, it was just really nice. I actually watched that the other night. I was just before I was going to bed, saying about uh, being eleven o'clock, my my bedtime. I go to bed between two and three, up again at seven. Oh my god, that's Crazy, you must be doing some crazy level of work there. Uh, turning into the pink donut. Who's turning into the pink donut? What are you on about? That's a sticky situation. What's going on in the chat, I swear? Right, anyway, I will leave it there, guys, because we're, we're way over the hour now. We're about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so, yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool today's video. I uh, What have I got? Uh, I, think, I think I've got another video coming out tomorrow. Is it Friday tomorrow? losing track of the days this week it's been so uh just so crazy but yeah i think i've got another video coming out tomorrow um and as i say if we could get these comedy shorts underway soon that'd be pretty cool and um yeah i will leave it there so thanks everyone for joining me um i'll just rub this off the board and then see if there's any more questions actually um and then i will get going chocolate donut say eh? i tell you it was quite nice the chocolate donut but it's like someone said in the chat, was it Louise, that, um, you know, it can get a bit sickly, you know? Um, the problem, you know what the problem with the chocolate donut is? And this isn't an analogy, I'm literally talking about chocolate donuts now. Um, was that they fill it with chocolate, this specific donut, it was a Cadbury one. So you've got chocolate frosting on the top, and you've got chocolate hundreds of thousands on the top. And then you've got a, a ring inside of filling, of chocolate filling. And it's like, it's just too much chocolate. Why can't you just put the frosting and the hundred thousands on top, you know, the chocolate frosting and hundred thousands, and be done with it? I don't want chocolate filling inside a donut that already has chocolate on top. You know what it's like? It's like when on profiteroles, and, and this is only very infrequently we do this, um, but they put chocolate on top of the profiterole, and then I think I've had one or two that have actually got chocolate inside the profiterole. Now... That's just too much chocolate. I can't taste the blooming pastry, you know? I mean, shoe pastry, as far as I'm aware, is quite hard to make. So if you're going to go to the trouble of making something that's fairly hard to make, you know, a, pa a type of pastry that's a little bit harder to make, why you would cover it in chocolate and then you wouldn't be able to taste it, I do not know, you know? Um, but, you know, so I like a little bit of chocolate on top of a profiterole, and then I get, you know, a good taste of the pastry, and I get a good taste of the chocolate, and then you can make, you know, some of them have cream in. Cream is a good uh, a good little thing for them, actually. Um, but, yeah, so it just, it's odd, actually, to me. But um, some things are in life, aren't they? They're just a bit, they're just a bit odd. But, you know, if I was marketing some of these different food, food, uh, foods and stuff and drinks, I'd probably do it better. Oh, well, I say better. I mean differently. Um, but not only that, I think I'd, I'd kind of mess around with how they're actually, the ingredients and stuff of them. But anyway, I'll leave it there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ramble forever on blooming food stuffs now, aren't I? So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. As I say, again, I'll just plug it very quickly at the end. I know there's been a lot of plugs in this video. Um, I, uh, you know, go and check out that special announcement video and uh, have a check of the video over on the eBay for Business UK channel. And uh, I will leave it there, guys. So I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon.